yeah so these are the areas in which prayas health group has been working for quite some time and i was talking about next slide about the research project that we recently did with young people called youth in transition uh, can go to the next slide please uh, yes so this particular research project we did with unmarried uh, youth uh, in urban area to understand basically how they make their decisions about their life including uh, their relationships uh, about their job and education and this particular research projects provided us a lot of insights about uh, the sexual health issues of young people which led to a uh, formulation of this particular web series or a series of videos we named as safe journeys so these videos are available on our uh, youtube channel and you are also provided with the link uh, for these videos you can have a look at this these are in marathi but uh, there is also uh, english uh, subtitles available for this so i'm not going to in this particular webinar i'm not going to talk a lot about uh, specific about these videos uh, next slide so what i want to uh, talk about is uh, is the approach that one should uh, have about sexuality education or what sexuality education basically means uh, uh, how do we look at the uh, approach whether that approach is appropriate is in the interest of young people so that is what the focus of today's discussion would be uh, you know think for 30 seconds and answer what do you think about it whatever is your idea of sexuality education uh, you uh, stick to that idea and just uh, answer what do you think if sexuality education program encourage teen to have sex or giving them this kind of information is giving them the green signal to experiment yeah. so the second question is sexuality education program must tell everyone uh, about abstinence from sexual activity till marriage what are your answers we have we all are on a common place that we are not debating or discussing whether there is a need for sexuality education or not uh, we clearly agree understand the importance and we know that from lot of research it has been proven that sexuality education programs are helpful in improving the well being of young people uh, building their values right kind of attitudes and uh helping them to also protect themselves from uh, the negative side of sexual uh, behaviors so we, we all are on the common place up till this point most of us understand that we need to do something we need to talk with there should be education but from this point onwards the confusion starts what kind of education what is it that we should actually emphasize Uh, and in that regard i want to highlight or you know try to explain these two words that we often use sometimes use uh, interchangeably and we again uh, i again want you to reflect on these two terms uh, you you can tell me by typing whether you think there is a difference between the word sex and sexuality or you want to write what does the word sex means or what is the difference just reflect for 30 seconds and you can just type in your response most of us most of us feel that there is a difference uh, sexuality is uh, sexuality is more comprehensive more broader so let's look at some of this which is absolutely uh, uh, right so you can uh, click the yeah so when we re- when we say sex or when we refer to sex we are mostly referring to body part or a, or a act or a uh, mostly the biological and physical aspect of sex but when we talk about sexuality uh, we are talking about much more comprehensive idea or something that defines we as humans including our thoughts fantasies desires beliefs attitude uh, gender roles sexual identities how we express it so much much more comprehensive aspect of sexuality so it's not just a narrow part of uh, uh, you know sex and this understanding this distinction is very important i mean one might ask next slide that okay what is the big difference whether we call it sex or we call it sexuality how does it going to make a difference uh, but there is a big difference because what we call would de- determine what is it that we are focusing on when when we are uh, talking about education for example if we agree that 
sex is more biological physical part of it sex education would entail that we are focusing more on the physical aspect of it so more like uh, you know focusing on promoting condom use unprotected sex or contraceptions hiv and, and you know diseases part of it uh, but if we if we believe that sexuality or if we uh, recognize that sexuality is much broader includes so many different aspects then sexuality education would also include education on different aspects right and comprehensive sexuality education would mean even more much more comprehensive approach to sexuality we're going to see what that approach is uh, but i think this names naming of for example you might be knowing about these names life skill education or family life education where you clearly see that there is a effort to avoid using the word sex or sexuality uh, when uh, when you when linking it with education to basically avoid the stigma that comes with the sex but if we believe that we need to talk about it and we need to openly talk about it i think it's a it's a high time that we should also call spade a spade so let's call sexuality education a sexuality education uh, i hope the difference between sex education and sexuality education is clear with the slide sexuality education and by comprehensive sexuality education it is of course a sexuality education which means we are going to not only include the physical aspect of education uh, of uh, of sex but much more about the emotional uh, psychological social uh, aspects of sexuality in addition to that when we say comprehensive sexuality education uh, we also mean that it is a curriculum based process of teaching and lear learning okay that is one thing so curriculum based meaning that we know from beginning what are the topics that we want to talk about why we want to talk about it whether it is for school children for uh, colleges or for out of school there is a curriculum there is a plan of talking about it that's point number 1 point number 2 it it aims to equip children and young people with knowledge skills and attitudes and value now why this uh, this is required because to empower them to achieve their health and well being as well as develop respectful social and sexual relationships okay so these important aspects like it's a curriculum based it aims at equipping or aims at building the abilities of young people to improve their well being is an important component of comprehensive sexuality education there are certain important characteristics when we say comprehensive sexuality education because you might be aware and some of you in your questions also mentioned that okay uh, how should we talk or what should we talk and there are a lot of people having lot of ideas uh, in which sexuality things are inappropriate to say or should not be said so when we say comprehensive sexuality education one of the important stand we take is that uh, is some of these uh, these essential characteristics for example it is scientifically accurate so science is the backbone or the uh, the founding pillar now by incremental what is uh, meant by is that like any other education you in it builds on the knowledge that was given previously so you introduce certain concepts to young people you introduce more complexities as they grow up so it's incremental in nature of course it's appropriate to age as well as the understanding of a particular person we discussed that it is curriculum based it is of course comprehensive and it's based on human right rather than taking an approach whether it is culturally appropriate whether it is sanctioned in the religion or not the approach that comprehensive sexuality education takes is a human rights approach so these are very essential characteristics of a comprehensive sexuality education now one might wonder if someone wants to do a comprehensive sexuality education in the school or college how the curriculum would look like what are the topics or what are the issues that uh, one needs to talk to in order to become a in order to deliver a comprehensive sexuality education
so in the in the international guidelines that that are provided uh, by many international organizations there are eight important themes that they highlight which should be covered in any comprehensive sexuality education for example relationship and now you have to remember that all these things are incremental so you introduce these con concepts at the beginning and then you build up on upon these concepts as you uh, as as the children uh, age right so there should be discussion on relationship for example relationship with family members relationship with peers relationship friends best friends girlfriend boyfriend so different dimensions and aspects of relationship should be there should be discussion about values what are the rights of individual how culture and sexuality are related to each other should be discussion about gender and most importantly discussion that gender is socially constructed so it's not uh, it's it's not that men have to behave in a particular way women have to behave in particular way also the diversity that uh, that exists in gender identities for example everyone born born with uh, biologically male need not be a man need not different than the the physical uh, sexual characteristics that a person has all these aspects that needs to be uh, covered and discussed uh, uh, very important aspects of violence and staying safe of course a discussion about what is consent what is violence different expressions of violence and what uh, people can do to protect themselves uh, skills for health and well being again a part on how you can protect yourself from not just avoid diseases but also how can, you can improve your well being and stay healthy uh, there there should be discussion about human body so the anatomy the physiology how body develops and uh, with age how changes happens in the body again a very important part of comprehensive sexuality education uh, the actual behavior feeling fantasies all these things would come in sexuality and sexual behavior and then certain sexual and reproductive health issues like contraception uh, you know pregnancy how the babies are born and things things like that so this roughly uh, uh, is how a comprehensive sexuality education curriculum uh, would look like these would be the things that would be expected to be covered in uh, in this uh, in this module of comprehensive sexuality education the expanse of it appears i mean to deliver or implement comprehensive sexuality education in any particular setting appears quite challenging for several reasons a lot of the time educators feels that that they don't have enough training or skills to talk about it there are no human resources they are already overburdened with the with the commitments uh, many of the time that there is also personal discomfort about the topic so how can we talk about such taboo or sensitive topic uh, Uh, because we are also part of the same society same culture uh, to you know to some extent to address these issues there are people who have developed certain tools to make this process easier but in my opinion what is most crucial is uh, not just the tools or the approach or you know uh, time and things but the most important thing is understanding what is it that you need to talk and how is that you need to talk about it how as in not the practicalities of it but the approach about it so you can talk about let's say when you're talking about sexuality and sexual behavior uh, like you can see in the cartoon you all your conversation can be in a direction that okay don't have sex you know this is wrong you should not be doing it so technically you are covering the topics but the way you are talking about it also is much more important when it comes to making it much more uh, effective and relevant for young people so how do we decide the approach that we have is it appropriate or not uh, what are there any guiding principles for that so there are four important guiding principles i thought would be important for you to assess not just the videos of safe journey any material that you come across 
uh, you can question yourself including your own approach on these four uh, principles uh, guiding principles the first one and the most important i would say is affirmative approach to sexuality and i like to explain what affirmative approach to sexuality is uh, if you uh, if you think about sexuality education most of sexuality education heavy and other sexually transmitted diseases in india and more recently about the uh, sexual gender based violence and sexual abuse that is happening and being reported in media so all the education efforts are being focused that uh, you know people should start using condom they should have safer sex uh, they should uh, be aware about the good touch and the, these are important things but uh, this is approaching sexuality from a very negative or only looking at the dark side of the sexuality uh, by affirmative approach to sexuality it, it is meant that sexuality is an important part of growing up uh, it's a pleasurable part uh, it's a very uh, essential part of you as a person as an individual to build your values to your attitudes uh, the way you look at society yourself uh, your understanding of gender so this approach needs to be much more positive and that is what is meant by affirmative approach to sexuality so not only focusing on prevention of diseases and prevention of abuse but approaching the issue of sexuality from much more positive side and and from a point of view that it is an essential component of growing up and a pleasurable part of growing up uh, also acknowledging diversity of values and choices that other people Uh, have in their expressions in their uh, in, uh, in their identities should be gender sensitive and by gender sensitive i don't mean only uh, binaries of gender like a man and women but sensitive to all kinds of gender expressions and should not perpetuate any stereotypes and should be uh, non judgmental so refrain from imposing their own values so you can use these principles Uh, to assess your own approach or to assess any approach in the any, any sexuality education material that you come across to understand whether this is a good enough material for me to use or not use it yeah so this i just uh, a, a recent incidents i thought worth sharing to, to to when when we are talking about when to start talking so i got a phone call from a teacher uh, asking can you come and talk to our learn standard boys about you know, how to respect a woman i was surprised i mean this is this is pretty uh, specific ask that i ever had uh, got so i said sure i can do that but i would like to know why you made such a specific why you want me to focus on such a specific topic and it turns out that last week one one of the boys instead of saying good morning said i love you to a lady teacher when she entered the class and the teacher was very upset because of this and uh, you know so therefore all of them thought that we must teach our boys how to respect women and this was i think many of the time either this kind of incidents or some other incidents you know people seeing boys and girls mixing too much or there is some of the other form of a problem that they see is the time when they realize that we must teach our boys and girls uh, if they think at all beyond menstruation to uh, to you know educate about sexuality education and this what i call is as a major reaction uh, of course whenever there is a problem you need to resolve the problem uh, but you this is definitely not the affirmative approach to sexuality okay if you think that uh, boys and girls should develop into a, a responsible uh, human being with respect to sexuality the the sexuality education needs to start much earlier uh, i'm sure there might there might be lot of such incidences you might be as a educator teacher you might be familiar with and there would be number of stories much more than what i have uh, to to share uh, next slide so coming back to this uh, this question of when should we start talking in my opinion the answer is very simple but it's simple only 
if we believe that our approach should be affirmative and our approach should be incremental so it's not that uh, you know after menstruation you just uh, uh, talk about menstruation and your job is done uh, that's not the idea the idea is that you uh, you talk and introduce about multiple things as and when uh, you know children starts asking about this question and this could be uh, in many children uh, could be at a very young age at the age of 5 or 6 they start asking about questions about their own bodies the differences between their body and a uh, you know body of opposite gender person a lot of uh, curiosity around that so i think that is the time when you should uh, start talking to young people or to children about uh, re issues related to sexuality another important question Uh, is always okay how to talk how to break the topic how to you know because it's such a taboo talk topic and no one talks about it of course it's not very comfortable to talk but uh, there are no uh, ready made answers there are no magic bullets uh, what are essential principles or general pointers when you are thinking of talking about sexuality to children particularly in the school context Uh, uh is what i thought i would list uh it is important to prepare uh, you know it's like teaching any other subject or topic it's important to prepare get trained build your capacities uh make sure that you have scientifically accurate information uh, reflect about your own values and beliefs about uh, sexuality be open and non judgmental ensure confidentiality maintain boundaries and protect rights so these are the essential important and most important i think is do not freak out you know just uh, two days back uh, a mother came to me uh, to talk about a situation she was really worried her <clears throat> her her son in sixth standard she found out that has been watching porn secretly in in bathroom because that chap probably didn't know how to go incognito or you know uh, clear the history uh, so she found that out and she was very worried now what should we uh, do so she uh, clearly told him that he's not going to get mobile phone hence for uh, she also told him lot of things that are actually not scientifically accurate so for example she told him that you will go mentally crazy if you watch this you will acquire diseases and what not and it's, it's i mean it, it doesn't take much time for kids to figure out that watching mobile will not Uh, you know uh, will not give them diseases or anything so it's important that we should have a factually correct information and it's also important that we should not freak out even if there is any uh, situation also very important is to maintain boundaries because sometimes it can happen that you're talking about such intimate things and you feel that whatever you are converse is uh, whatever you are suggesting or guiding children should uh, you know follow exactly the same but again that's not the idea and you you might go extra boat uh, you know uh, over the boat to see whether they are doing it or not doing it i think it's also very important to maintain those boundaries between whatever kind of your relationship whether as a parent or as a educator there are of course certain tools that you can use which can facilitate your conversation uh, with the child it could be images drawings diagrams audio visual material uh, and uh, sometimes you can also use the news that keeps on coming and every day newspaper there are news about sexuality whether it is about me too campaign honor killing child sexual abuse or you know love relationship and abuse within those relationships so all these can be an opportunities uh, to initiate conversation with young people and give them based on of course their understanding their age uh, provide them appropriate information about different aspects or different components of uh, sexuality education 
the image on the right side is just to show that uh, at prayas we had compiled uh, india specific audio visual material which is related to sexual health so covering different topics right from menstruation to masturbation or growing up issues and all and this uh, uh, this is available on our website uh, for free download uh, which provides different uh, sources for sexuality education. So, what if if you're an educator and if you're thinking of uh, doing sexuality education in your school? I thought uh, I, there could be some pointers for you to assess uh, following things uh, as a preparedness to initiate sexuality education. And the first one is competence. So whoever is going to provide sexuality education, teachers, educators, or whoever, uh, are they competent to do that? So by competence, I mean so many things, not just the technical knowledge of what to talk, but the communication skills, their reflection of their own values about sexuality, uh, their own judgments about things. Can they be really non-judgmental in different uh, situations? So all these things would come under competence. So that's very important that whoever is talking is competent enough to deliver that uh, uh, that education or that module second is cooperation so cooperation uh, from institution also so institution heads other people other teachers parents are they cooperative uh, enough because without that cooperation you might just face a lot of resistance from them to deliver and then it, it uh, cannot go the way it should go in terms of becoming comprehensive, taking more affirmative approach to sexuality. So cooperation is also very important. Third is curriculum. So <clears throat> it's very important to, to design a curriculum. What are the things that you need to talk at what age, how you're going to cover it, uh, who will be included? All these components should be there in the curriculum. So there should be a curriculum. Uh, design for education and there should also be some collaboration uh, 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 there should be some collaboration with organizations uh, in case you need anything for example you're delivering uh, sexuality education and you come uh, to know that there are children who are being abused at home or in other contexts so how do you deal with this particular situation or you realize that there are certain issues and there are mental health issues about young people, maybe depression, anxiety, or something like that, which is linked with sexuality or body image, and you need specific care. So you need to have, you need to know, uh, you know, what are your different uh, support mechanisms and support systems that uh, you, uh, that, that are important part when you're thinking of providing sexuality education. Actually. I just read a question, how often you should talk to your children. So I think that that again would be a component that would go into a curriculum there's no uh, set uh, frequency which is there a uh, lot of people have experimented with different things the most uh, important part is feasibility uh, definitely it is no uh, it is clear that one time sessions don't help much so there has to be a continuation there has to be a continuation in terms of the age gradation for example if you're doing a lecture in fifth uh, grade uh, to introduce basic concepts and the language and everything. Uh, then as the grade progresses, you would in increase more complexity or add uh, new topics to it. Uh, so, so long as you are able to cover uh, comprehensively the issues that we discuss, the frequency need to be decided based on the feasibility of, you know, what is possible, what is not possible uh, in a given context. So that's in a nutshell from my uh, side about a very quick introduction to comprehensive sexuality education. Absolutely, I mean, I, I would say uh, there's no reason why one should not talk about menstruation to boys, uh, irrespective of whether they have sister or not. I mean, uh, because most of the time, this curiosity about when uh, when when boys are growing, they have curiosity. So uh, they, they, it's always better that they know that what is 
changing in the bo- in the girl's body how it relates to boy's body what are, what is different because unless and until they know that they won't be able to know about you know the physiology of uh, reproductions and so many other aspects so it's it's uh, i would say one must talk about it to boys as well yeah so there is a organization called tarshi in delhi and uh, the the report or one of the paper on sexuality education that was shared uh, was from uh, tarshi so uh, i think they do provide courses for parents as well as for educators uh, which are online and with some offline module as well and they are pretty good so i think uh, i can share a link of their website or it's there on their uh, i think the report Uh, and you can check on their website so that that's a huge question um and uh, i mean there are no there are no direct answers to it you have to assess uh, sometimes people are open enough to uh, to understand why you are saying about a particular topic but sometimes they are not open and you can't do about it for example even in in a country like us uh, uh, the current president doesn't believe that abortion uh, should should be a right of an individual so i mean that uh, it's a very difficult question to to answer but you have to if you are convinced you can find a language uh, uh, that you can use to communicate it to other person uh, you may succeed you may not the remaining part of the story that i shared so i uh, uh, i did uh, tell them that okay i'm fine to come and talk to you but i will not just focus on this particular issue but i would like to uh, take at least two sessions to explain gender and other aspect that was one part and i also requested that i want to talk to teachers because um, uh, it's 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 both ways teachers also needs to un- need to understand Uh, basic ideas about sexuality how children in this particular age group would react and how to you know react to those uh, situations because uh, otherwise uh, things can be handled well uh, if you are aware but if you are not then a simple things can give rise to lot of stress so i think both these things i requested to the school that i would like to do again no uh, bullet points for that uh, but gender bias at what age among whom uh, from whom uh, all these things would matter uh, that's the reason why we always say that uh, start talking to children uh, at very at very young age and make sure that whatever you're telling is gender sensitive so you're not inculcating the same gender stereotypes that we otherwise Uh, have in the society otherwise it becomes very difficult to talk to someone who has a very hard ideas about or notions about something i'm not saying that transformation is not possible at that age uh, but that would require much more uh, conversations about it one important thing when you talk about gender is uh, is essential is to talk about how gender is socially constructed so it is not uh, it is not a given prescribed thing but we are on a constant on a regular basis we do keep on constructing the ideas about gender about masculinity about femininity uh, so that social construction of gender and the power that is associated with gender needs to be uh, i think highlighted to uh, to talk about gender bias i think it's uh, it's pretty uh, I, i would say as a part of growing up people most people start uh, some kind of sexual you know feelings or attractions some people uh, have it with opposite gender some people have it for say, uh, same gender some people have it for uh, and you have to know that this is your inclination this is your 
uh, you know orientation so to say so this is one part of the process the second part of process is actually naming your orientation so some people just have these feelings but don't know the names about it or there are different names for different uh, for the similar kind of expression so i think it's a it's a process uh, once you know that who are you attracted to and in some situations it's also possible that you're not sexually attracted to anyone uh, everything is is normal and possible so based on these attractions you realize what is your orientation uh, what is your orientation is I I don't really agree with the first part of the question that overuse of technology is leading to early uh, puberty because puberty is largely a biological uh, process uh, like when one starts a puberty other biological factors like good nutrition diet and other things can lead to puberty early puberty compared to their generation uh, but definitely not overuse of technology but i i uh, agree with the part of the question that uh, because of the technology a lo lot of young uh, kids are also asking questions without knowing what they are uh, uh, asking or what what those words mean and all uh, and my uh, simple response to it would be uh, you just explain them matter of factly and scientifically accurate information provided they that they are they are at least old enough to understand what you are saying so if you if you're really talking to someone uh, like in first standard it has to be a very uh, you know simple thing uh, which the the kid from the first standard can assimilate okay so what i want to stress is don't discard these questions is the point uh, how you have to talk about this is ba is based on what is the level of understanding of that particular person but don't just say that okay you will know about it when you grow up because that will uh, never uh, you know help the person to remove the curiosity if you if you talk to them about gender and if you talk to them about uh, gender identity as a matter of choice you know of the entire spectrum for example you are man because you chose to call yourself a man or a woman or a girl or a boy uh, in the same way there are people who don't feel that they are either man or a woman they feel that they are transgender so i think if you explain the whole spectrum then there is nothing specific about transgender that you need to explain the, the basic idea is that you you explain uh, gender and gender identity as concepts which will take care of it uh that's also a very good question because uh, uh because it's it's not that only schools can take care of it parents also have a very active role in building those values and attitudes and information in in a child's uh, uh, you know growing up process uh, so i think the first uh, thing is that Uh, you know communicating with parents that why there is a need to talk about these issues uh, that is the most uh, important thing so maybe as a part of parent child uh, parent teacher meeting you can introduce or uh, i don't know different mechanisms in different schools some schools uh, send out emails to parents that they are organizing such and such lectures uh, and kids go back and talk to the parents so uh, i think the the first important thing is that we that communicating to them that this kind of conversation is needed and also telling them that uh, uh, how they can contribute in this process of growing up uh, so that's uh, yeah that's limitations uh, i i would say it, one is because if the class strength is too high then uh, it's very difficult sometimes to address uh, the questions and con concerns of uh, different people sometimes the group dynamics is such that uh, uh, you know kids don't feel comfortable asking questions uh, in a group so there should be some mechanisms to you know they can write it on a piece of paper and uh, things like uh, like like that certain questions if you feel i mean i'm more uh, for for taking sessions joint sessions of so boys and girls together 
because there is nothing that you should say that okay this is something that boys should not understand this is something that girls should not understand or things like that but if that is really not possible in your setup uh, then you can have some mix sessions some separate sessions so 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 that could also be one of the limiting uh, factor and i think the amount of time that you can spend on these modules in in schools uh, is one of the biggest uh, challenging or limiting that's that's again a very uh, good question and that's the reason why we created uh, this web series of safe journeys and we also trained uh, some young peers so that they can use these tools and generate more positive discourse about sexuality in the community because unless and until uh, it uh, it gets normalized it's very difficult for uh, uh, to to remove this particular taboo so i think more efforts uh, not at just at the level of individuals but also at the level of uh, let's say government uh, because in many states the government is uh, has not included sexuality education as part of their school curriculum or even if it is there it's very limited to the biological part so some efforts advocacy efforts at the level of uh, government to in include that uh, more individual efforts to talk about it uh are the two important uh, ways and more tools and such kind of you know webinars discussions that we will have uh, we will be able to reach out to more audiences i mean uh, okay if if people are open to learn then and if you have really good module uh, to train them with lot of exercises and discussions uh, then i i think young, uh, you know the challenges are not that significant uh, that it, it would leave you with frustration a lot of young people are uh, much more open about it and they do understand the importance of these issues in their life uh, so if you really have good facilitators and good techniques and tools with you uh, the challenges are not not many say so the the international technical guidelines on sexuality comprehensive sexuality education prepared by unfpa who and uh, other agencies that we had shared as a part of resources uh, that uh, gives you a good evidence based uh, authentic accurate information along with other references as well you can have a look at the uh, web page of safe journeys and we have also listed other resources there you can have a look at the web page of tarshi and they have also listed other resources so i think this would give you a fairly good accurate uh, information that you need uh, 